A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Miletus, Paul had the presbyters of the church at Ephesus summoned. When they came to him, he addressed them. You know how I lived among you the whole time from the day I first came to the province of Asia. I served the Lord with all humility and with the tears and trials that came to me because of the plots of the Jews. And I did not at all shrink from telling you what was for your benefit or from teaching you in public or in your homes. I earnestly bore witness for both Jews and Greeks to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus. But now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem. What will happen to me there I do not know, except that in one city after another, the Holy Spirit has been warning me that imprisonment and hardships await me. Yet I consider life of no importance to me, if only I may finish <clears throat> if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to bear witness to the gospel of God's grace. But now I know that none of you to whom I preached the kingdom during my travels will ever see my face again. And so I solemnly declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God. Pebum Domini. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. A bountiful rain you showered down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished. Your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Blessed day by day be the Lord, who bears our burdens, God who is our salvation. God is a saving God for us. The Lord, my Lord, controls the passageways of death. Dominus Fobiscum, et Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem, Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. 
Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them. And they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. Verbum Domini we are in the midst of uh, praying the Novena uh, to the Holy Spirit and I want to uh, encourage everyone especially those who aren't uh, praying yet uh, to encourage everyone to join this uh, praying for nine days uh, in preparation for um, Pentecost Sunday. Again, perhaps some of you have not, uh, you know, started this novena uh, since last Friday, which was when we started it. And it's fine for you um, to just start where we're at. We're on the um, fifth day uh, of the novena and just continue you know, from today forward until this coming uh, Saturday, which is the eve of uh, Pentecost. And obviously there are different novenas out there that you can uh, get some simple ones, some very lengthy ones, some you know, moderate, uh, you know, with nice reflection and so forth. Um, if you want to do the ones that uh, the friars and I do every day, during this time, you can join us here in this chapel. Uh, we have our rosary at 4.30, followed with Vespers at 5, and benediction. And then immediately after benediction, we pray the novena. And then the nove if you come here to this chapel, we have the novena uh, provided for you before you enter the chapel. And if you're not here, you can uh, join us spiritually wherever you're at. Uh, you know, you can get the same novena that we use uh, that's in the EWTN uh, website. Uh, the, the, the part that I like about our novena is that we have this little reflection, uh, little reflection of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and each of the day we pray for the particular gifts and then also consecrating ourselves to the Holy Spirit and asking the Lord to uh, rekindle within us and give us anew uh, the sevenfold gifts uh, of the Holy Spirit. And again, if you didn't start last Friday, like I said, you can just start uh, from today forward and continue until Saturday. Uh, but if you use the same one that we do, you know, just read the reflections uh, from first day till to get caught up till today and then just move uh, forward from this day forward until uh, Saturday. And um, each gifts of the Holy Spirit really uh, is what we all need. You know, each gifts of the Holy Spirit really transform us into the true image and the true likeness of Christ. And the apostles, the saints, and all holy men and women of all time uh, they were transformed by the gifts of the Holy Spirit and also their cooperation with the Holy Spirit's gifts and the Holy Spirit himself. Uh, again, it's not just the gifts of God that were, you know, being operated as if we don't have free will, we don't have freedom, but it's uh, the gifts and our cooperation, our involvement with God's uh, plan. And today on the Franciscan calendar, is the uh, feast of Saint Crispin of Viterbo. Uh, he's a Franciscan uh, lay brother who is noted for miracles, for his prophecies, and for his holiness. Uh, he was born in Viterbo, Italy in 1668 and died in 1750. 
Uh, he studied at the Jesuit college and became a Franciscan Capuchin when he was uh, 25. Uh, those of you who do gardening work, I know my mom does, likes to garden. Um, he served as a gardener, he served as a cook. Uh, he, we can invoke him to be one of our patron saints when we're involved in those areas. And then also during an epidemic, uh, Crispin uh, affected many uh, miraculous uh, cures, we were told. And he was also venerated, again, I mentioned earlier, for his prophecies and uh, spiritual uh, wisdom. He died in Rome this day, May, May 19th, as I mentioned in uh, 1750, and he was beatified in 1806 and canonized by uh, St. John Paul II in 1982. Again, every single saint in heaven uh, became saints due to the Holy Spirit and his sevenfold gifts and their cooperation with God. Uh, every single one of them was transformed by the Holy Spirit and by, the, uh, by His gifts. Without the Holy Spirit and without His gifts, no one, really no one, can go beyond His natural gifts, beyond His natural talents, beyond His uh, natural state. Uh, the Holy Spirit and His gifts transform every single saint in heaven to be who they are today. Uh, so this novena to the Holy Spirit is really very essential in our Christian life, very essential in our uh, prayer and spiritual life. Uh, our Blessed Mother and the Apostles, they themselves were praying for nine consecutive days before the Holy Spirit descended upon them in the upper room. If they're doing it for nine consecutive days, how much more we ought to do it as well you know, by participating in this uh, novena. And also how uh, after uh, the Holy Spirit's coming, the apostles and the disciples were truly transformed. And, and we see this in the gospel, you know, we see it how, how they were before and how they were after. One of the obvious mark of their transformation was that they used to be so fearful. They used to be so afraid you know, what were they doing after our Lord uh, ascended to heaven? They locked themselves in the upper room. Why were they locking themselves in the upper room? Because they, they did not want the Jews who opposed them to get them and to persecute them. In other words, they don't want to go through any sufferings. They don't want to go any conflicts uh, in their own time. But... After the Holy Spirit's coming, uh, these fearful disciples became so courageous and so bold that nothing would stop them. No matter how great their obstacles were, nothing would stop them to proclaim Jesus Christ crucified. Nothing would hinder them to proclaim uh, God's kingdom. Nothing would hinder them to accomplish their mission as the church's first missionaries. You know, we are all missionaries. When we're, uh, Pope Fran our Holy Father Pope Francis uh, would remind us that as long as we're baptized, we automatically become missionaries. You know, not just priests, not just religious, not just teachers, but every one of us. Every baptized are missionaries. Um, again, these uh, disciples, they were the church's first missionaries. If there were great obstacles, they would quote-unquote bulldoze in a way their obstacles and continue on to reach their goal to be witnesses of Christ, uh, to be, uh, you know, proclaimers of God's kingdom, proclaiming uh, Christ. And how was this possible? The gifts of the Holy Spirit was what makes them possible. Uh, particularly the gift of fortitude is what makes them possible. Uh, yesterday in the novena, um, the fourth day of the novena, was particularly reflecting on the gift of fortitude. Uh, the gift of fortitude, it said that by the gift of fortitude, we are strengthened against natural fear. 
You know how, how many of us experience natural fear in all different levels. Uh, we, by the gift of fortitude, we are strengthened against natural fear. We are supported to the end in the performance of our duty. You know, helps us to persevere, helps us to, despite the, the hardships, despite the, the struggles, we keep on going. Yeah. Um, fortitude imparts to the will an impulse and an energy which move it to undertake without hesitancy the most arduous task to face dangers, to trample underfoot human respect, and to endure without complaint the slow martyrdom of even lifelong tribulation. You know how much uh, you and I need this gift of fortitude today. Um, how badly and how urgently we need this gift of uh, fortitude. The first reading uh, from the Acts of the Apostles uh, earlier, which Brother Matthew read, you know, here uh, the gift of fortitude was active in the life of St. Paul. Uh, St. Paul was guided by the Holy Spirit and how the gift of fortitude moved him to do what the Lord called him to do what to go to jerusalem uh, to face opposition um, again to to have this this impulse this energy to go against natural fear you know um, <clears throat> uh, who 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 would if we're just living if we're just living on a natural level uh, who would want to face any Opposition. If we have a sense that there's going to be opposition coming up, we would not go there. You know, uh, if I know in a couple hours I'm going, I have to go somewhere, and I know there's going to be opposition in front of me. If I'm operating on a natural level, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to stay here and take my comfort of security and peace. You know? um, again, no one. If, if we're on, an, on a mere natural level, no one in the right mind would face opposition. Uh, why would you want to go where you're going to face conflicts and opposition and even possible imprisonment, possible physical torments? Again, we would not want to go there. We would want to run away as far as possible. But the gift of fortitude is what transform uh, St. Paul and all the saints to face conflicts and opposition directly and to, to, to face it head on. Yeah. Um, again, St. Paul said it earlier, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. Compelled by the Holy Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. What will happen to me there, I do not know. So he has no idea what's he, what he's going to face. It's not like, the Holy Spirit give him some kind of uh, vision, some kind of prophecy, what's going to happen to him. He, doesn't, he didn't know. He did not know. What will happen to me there, I do not know, except that in one city after another, the Holy Spirit has been warning me that imprisonment and hardships await me. Again, if Paul was operating on his own natural abilities, natural level, he would not go to face imprisonment and hardships. He would stay home and uh, take the path of comfort and security. And yet the gift of fortitude was activated and alive within St. Paul. So he went above and beyond his natural level, natural uh, abilities. In our own world today, there are so many oppositions and conflicts everywhere the terrorists, the ISIS, all these uh, group of terrorists, the oppositions of those against the Catholic Church, the opposition of those against God. You know, even, even within, within our country, even, even within the church, some groups may be, you know, having a certain push against a certain agenda that they have that's not according to God's plan, according to God's uh, will. You know, the list is too long and it's getting longer every minute, it seems, of these oppositions, of these conflicts. 
if we're operating and living only on a natural plane, these oppositions uh, discourage us tremendously. Uh, these possible conflicts we're facing, we would, again, we would want to run away as far as possible. Yet, we're not just a natural man and natural woman. You know, we're all baptized men and women. We've been elevated in a way above our natural life. We've been called to be saints of the third millennium. We've been called, just like St. Paul, to face any hardships that await us. Not because we're hungering for doom and destruction, um, not for that, but for our witnessing to Jesus Christ and for the glory of His kingdom and His church, and eventually, at the end, to receive our eternal inheritance at the completion of our uh, witnessing at the end of our life. Again, only the Holy Spirit and His sevenfold gifts and our cooperation would make that happen. Again, I don't need to tell you this, uh, but you know, it, uh, you know it truly, that there are many bad things in today's world. There are so many bad things in today's world. However, there are many good things in this world we're living as well. And I know without doubt, these good things are in each and every one of you. you know, these good things are in each and every one of you that God wants to accomplish through you. And the same thing with me, that He wants to do it through me. Again, provided, of course, we cooperate. Uh, and God Himself planted the seed of good within uh, our hearts and our souls. God wills to affect good into the world through you and me. God wills to transform this world through human agents and instruments like you and me. And you and I won't be able to do anything good, nothing, unless the Holy Spirit and His sevenfold gifts are active and alive uh, within us. So how much we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how essential this novena to the Holy Spirit is. And so, like the saints, uh, let us cooperate with God and let our lives be led uh, by the Holy Spirit and His sevenfold gifts, especially the gift of fortitude, just like what happened to St. Crispin Viterbo, just like what happened to St. Paul, just like what happened to all the saints in history, all the holy men and women even in, who are living today still. You know, they are led by the Holy Spirit and His sevenfold gifts. When we are cooperating, when these gifts are active within our uh, lives, then God would accomplish His will in heaven as it is on earth through us, His chosen ones here on earth.